in just a moment. Yay! Hello people who like to make things, and people who like to watch people make things, and people who are wondering why they're here and what the hell's going on. Finally managed to get my bot to tweet, to tweet, to post, as mean, when it's... Oh, where am I going? Uh, rather than as the bot when it's selected as streamer because that was an issue in setting up. Um, it's a bit heavier than normal, but you know, I'm going to make some foam pants. Or I'm going to continue making some foam pants. This is what I did yesterday, which was attach these three pieces together. Um, this piece lies over this piece. As you can see on the back. This piece, however, is just recessed back from this piece, which was done using a handy little 2mm foam uh, backing to slide them together and um, to get that nice uh, even recessed line, which I also then use on the back piece. So, what I need to do just now is stick a respirator on so that I can breathe because contact cement is not something you want to be breathing um, pin this down no, I don't need to pin it down I pinned it down to get the markings already which is what this line along here is which you might be able to see if I can figure out where the camera is Yay. so that I know where to apply the glue which I've also done on the inside of this piece so uh, Something else I meant to do with my bot before I started as well, and I can't remember what it was. Um, <laughs> no, that's a no. Can I edit this? No, I'll do it later. Let's go back to console. Um, but yeah, follows are free. Click the follow button if you like and hopefully we'll all be friends and have fun now to figure out where I've left my respirator ah. I know you should really keep it sealed in a plastic bag but um, I don't really use that many noxious chemicals about it and I do change the filters out a little bit frequently so. We'll see how we go, and hopefully my voice is still hearable through this thing. Oh, no. Oh, damn it. 
That's the one thing. Wearing glasses on a respirator at the same time isn't as easy as it might look. So... I don't know who this is, but I kind of like it. It's... What am I looking for? Foam spreader. Foam spreader. You're a bit floppy. Let's do this. You and you. I always like to have a couple of pieces of foam cut into a triangle. And handy for getting a nice tripping. Um, thin layer of foam across the bits that I'm blowing rather than having a clumpy and um, horrible. Oh, Tell you what. Before we get to gluing, need a little bit of tea. Mainly so that it doesn't go cold when I'm doing this. Also, try and have it in the morning. Hot. Well, afternoon. This is likely to be a pretty short stream, and probably about an hour or so. As per my own. Oh, that's better. Um, but we'll see how we go. More to the point, see if somebody will continue their nap long enough. Well, this shouldn't be too dummy because I did use it yesterday. Now you fix some of this one to show you. Right side of that, inside of that, we're all good, we're good. I've got my phone going, but usually my phone's sitting in the way. Right. Now I'm still relatively new to this whole streaming thing, so trying to make sure that things are on screen while I'm doing them. Uh, it's a bit of a fun because I can never get used to where it, see? This camera is pointing. Now, I don't mind that this is going over this line here because this is going to be on the inside, um, so it doesn't matter if it's a bit messy. This bit will be more careful because it will be visible if anything goes out with the, the drawn lines. There we go. So let's get a little bit of spread going on here. We want a nice thin layer of foam here. Foam? Not foam, glue. Ah, clumpy bits. See, I'm surprised that this stuff is actually as um, spreadable as it is at the moment, purely because it's been in this condiment bottle for. Say, if not almost, then at least two months. I can't remember if I filled this up before or after I finished my Squirtle build for Halloween. But if it was October, then this has lasted forever in here. Yay! Good stuff. Yeah. I just want to get a semi decent coverage over here so that there aren't any loose, floppy bits. It's likely that because this is going to be on, on my butt, ah, stop going forward. Because it's going to be on my kind of butt area, that I'm likely to reinforce these seams with hot glue anyway. Um, in the hopes that I can sit down, but more for um, kind of leg and thigh and torso movements. I don't want it to be. Too much stress put on these areas and the bits falling off my own trying to walk. If I ever get the damn thing finished. No. I'm gonna wait a wee second and add a bit more on that. There's actually a bit much glue up here. I didn't quite spread it quickly enough, so it's a little bit thicker than I would have liked up there, but yeah, what do you do? Except for that bit there. Not there. So I'll stick this bit out of the way over by the fan, so it can start getting tacky, while I apply some glue to this bit. 
Now this bit will go in smaller sections to get a bit thinner. Just a bit. A spread. Now I can kind of taking that off as I go. Not too much, thank you. There we go. A little bit, we're getting there. Normally whenever I'm doing gluing and stuff I tend to listen to more kind of um, electronic air type stuff. Especially with contact cement because it can get a little uh, stressful at times. <laughs> but today I felt like something a little bit heavier so... Split a fire to the rescue. Oops, ah, one of one. To be honest I don't really mind too much because this is going to be being coated in polyprop shield which apparently can give us a hardness of up to construction helmet hard hat level if you put I think between three or four coats on it so we'll see how that goes I'm going to be testing that stuff on the spider-man face shell that I've been making although I've got a a couple of things to do with that before I can start applying the shield and um, namely heat form it to my headset because um, I've got a, a duct tape head form sitting just behind me actually hold on yeah, I'm not going to do that actually that's going to be heading out of here but um, you know, I suppose we'll get this one a little bit if you think about it We'll see how we go. No. That's what I want. I need just to get right into that corner there. Yeah. That should be nice. Try and get rid of that glowy bits on the end. Because we don't want that. Closing issues are pulling off. More importantly. Stick this back on here. And we'll let that get tacky for a while. This should be good to go I think. It's looking horrible. <laughs> yeah, you can tell the, the glue's gone a wee bit beyond its best. You can see the way it's done this kind of weird, almost creamy colour. And it's getting a bit gummy too quickly. What we want is a nicer sheen look on here. Which I don't know if you can get on that camera. Yeah, it's just a bit of a sheen rather than this weird globby kind of like, creamy consistency. Which ain't so pretty. Um yes, so spider man to the If we can get it on there, it's a little bit So whenever I'm pulling this over this is a duct tape head form of my head, it might seem like easier to see on this small camera. Whenever I'm trying to pull this in a little chin. You can see if I try and cast it, if I try and keep form this round, we're gonna get a big rocketeer clicker up at this part of the seam. See that there? So I'm probably gonna have to slit that seam and join that more at kind of that level. So what I'll maybe do is tack this on to the head form with a bit of double-sided sticky tape and kind of force it round to figure out exactly where I need to take it off. I'll probably, I'm not doing that anymore. I'll probably just draw a line down each side, cut it out and blow it before I heat form it, rather than heat forming it. Because yeah, if it's a wee bit out, it shouldn't matter, because it should still be able to form it nicely enough. A little bit of push and pull for heat forming. Well, we'll see how we go. That's for another time, not right now. Because that'll be done outside, probably, of an evening. And that's where the wee one's in bed. So. Also, Christmas t-shirt. It's like aliens and Jurassic Park. Yes. Best way. And now. I'm listening to the game. What I'm going to do is just push this down here and then go one side and then the 
other because we need it to have a little bit of a turn on. Just at this point. Okay. Once it's all stuck down and properly glued, that's a, that's a nice regular ribs, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> Loving. Yeah, so this is essentially the front piece. This piece here, whoops, at the end, joins to, sorry, that was joins to the inside of this piece here. I was looking at reference pictures, whoops, joins to this piece here. Now, the model makes it look like it goes on to this piece at a bit of an angle, but having looked at reference pictures, the other night, as you do, um, from the actual screen used set, like behind the scenes photos, it looks like the piece actually joins at an almost 90 degree angle. This piece comes down straight and then it kind of curves under. Um, also, I'm going to be taking out most of this between the legs piece anyway, uh, because really, it's just not comfortable. So. What I'm maybe going to do now, no, what I'm definitely going to do now, yeah, is glue these bits into position because they need to come at a bit of a funny angle and sit like this, which you can't really see there, and then it needs to lean in on itself. So, um, also I've kind of screwed this up a wee bit by cutting the whole way through that piece. Because I'm an idiot. Um, and then once I've done that, I'll get the hot glue going on. Which I'm going to retrieve from the drawer it resides in right now. So I'm going to disappear that for a bit. Right. And the uh, fantastic glue drip contraption that I use of a flora margarine leg. And it works. And the glue is easy to pop off as well, which is even better. Now I'm going to need another stick for that. So I'll let that heat up there. You have one handy. Now, what is going on? Sorry, the room... <laughs> words. At the moment, this room is incredibly full of guff from Christmas. There's a table and a stool and some other bags that normally aren't in here. Because the table lives in the living room, but currently the Christmas tree is where the table normally lives. And the Christmas tree is too big to put on top of the table, which is what we used to do. Because we got a new Christmas tree. Where's that lens flare coming from? What the? Is that like reflecting off my glasses or something? Looks like something's blowing. No idea. Who knows? Who cares? I will stick my in there. No, I'm not going to go in there. I'll wait until I need to squeeze it. First of all, I need to get this bit. Nope, this bit fixed. Hey, what side is it? This one. Put a little bit of this. But first, it's not like I'm trying not to rip the rest of it off as I go. What I have done in the past with little bits like this is, if I end up with a gap, you can't actually see what I'm doing, I can. Um, if I end up with a gap, seriously, where's the glue? If I do it with that, I'm not going to do um, If I end up with a tiny gap on the outside, I sometimes get some super glue on a cocktail stick, on the end of a cocktail stick, um, just to poke into the, the gap, and then squeeze it together. And that usually, hopefully, usually does the trick um, to get rid of any tiny gaps. If bits that have been fully cut through, for example, I'm just going to hold this over by the fan for a second. 
Ah, try not to get too much blue on the other side of me. So that way we're <laughs> normally when you've got a dashed line, it means you need to cut a valley. And when you've got a solid line, that's when you need to cut all the way through. And in terms of this piece, it was part dashed line, part solid line. And of course I worked from the wrong end and started cutting the valley straight through. Which was a bit stupid. However, what do you do? I've got a wee bit of quick sealy type stuff on the outside of that anyway. What I really need to do is figure out where these are going, so I'll probably put a bit of millimeter. Right. Let's start with the other side then. All I'm going to do is run a little bit of this glue. From the end card here. Again, I don't really mind. This will get sorted with clean up. Hopefully, I can get it smooth enough that it's not going to be too noticeable. Apologies if I slap them like this. <laughs> It doesn't really matter about the underside of this one because it's not going to be visible anyway. So yeah, what I need to do is get this in position vertically and then with these, if you can see that there, this trench that I've cut in it here, um, We'll fill that line with hot glue and kind of squeeze it back on itself so it'll create a, an angle on the outside of the film. But we'll see how we go. I'm trying to determine if we should start this other side. I do tend to mumble. And with a uh, respirator on that makes it all the worse. So if you can't hear me, just a message in the chat saying mumble. I am at some point hopefully going to have a command which is ideally going to be exclamation mark or exclamation point mumble and um, which will play a noise <laughs> so if I am talking too quietly you can just let me know that way and I'll have an audio notification an audible notification mumbling again an audible notification should I say Fingers crossed, it means I'll hopefully end up getting out of the habit of mumbling too much. Now, where's the film spreader? What have I done with it? There it is. Hiding. 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 Yeah, and if anybody doesn't watch um, the kids' show Hey Duggy on CBBS, I highly recommend you do so because it's absolutely fantastic. They say it's for preschoolers, but one of the recent ones um, has what has to be, it must be an homage to Spaced. Um, most pertinently the episode where they go to the club and there's a 18 dance track. It's, it's brilliant, seriously, so many of them are just so good. They're only like six minutes long or something flash animation, but highly, highly worth watching. In fact, if you want an intro to it, um, go on YouTube and search for Hey Dougie, which is D-U-G-G-E-E, -E. G for golf, G for golf, E for echo, E for echo, stick, like a stick. Um, because it is amazing. Let's see. This angle here. There. So this is quite recent. Let's see if we can get it around this way. In the light. 
So as you can see, this is now quite recessed. Um, so there's not a lot of kind of overhang, as it were, um, or <laughs> parts touching, shall we say, um, for stability or security. Um, so I will definitely be reinforcing this with hot glue all along that line, not just in the trench that we're going to bend in. Let's see if we can get the other side to match now. I think bite in the one way that's right here. I am aware that I'm doing some of this off camera, but unfortunately, that's something this fiddly needs must. Needs must! Needs must. What am I doing? Thank. So. Anyway, that should kind of do there. So, as you can see, we've got two nice recessed pieces. Uh, no, we can't, because <laughs> I'm putting it off camera. Ah, I got done it. There. So it's here and here. And what we're going to do is then angle this even further to bend it in to give more of a, a kind of angled uh, finish on the outside. Is this hot? Yeah, the hot glue dump is here. Now, no. we're fine for the minute. Oh, actually, this is a really handy trick. So, if anybody doesn't watched, watched, watch the uh, Punished Props channel, or um, follow their YouTube videos, or their Facebook content, or their Instagram or Twitter content, this was a video, or this was in a video that I've added to my watch later list, so that I can always have it, like, really quickly to send to people. If you're using hot glue, hot glue I used to use for making stuff really badly. An example being this crappy Captain America helmet, which was my first kind of film build proper. As you can see inside, it's an absolute mess of glue. Look at that. It's horrible! Um, but yeah, my main issue with it was that it took. It just takes so long to cool down, especially if you're using hot, hot glue, high temperature. Because essentially with hot glue, it doesn't cure, it just cools. So, <laughs> Bill from Punished Props had the ingenious idea. Can we turn this around to look like that? Yeah. Air duster. The stuff that you use to clean out your keyboard. If you hold it upside down, don't shake it. If you hold it upside down and spray it, it emits a jet of really, really cold, um, liquid. That's the stuff, which I believe is probably the propellant. Um, but it's great, because it cools down hot glue almost instantly. Don't get it near your hands, don't get it near your skin, because it will give you, like, ice burns if you get it on you. Uh, which isn't ideal. Um, so... Yeah, if you're using hot glue, I shall demonstrate. Essentially, I'm gonna go off camera slightly bit. You don't really need to see me, it doesn't matter. Is this? Yeah. So, we put it in the gap. I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna do this all the way around just to give an extra reinforcement to that piece. We then hold our piece in position at the angle that we desire, which for this will be about that, I think. Hold the can upside down, let's see if we can get this on the screen. Right, I am trying to keep my thumb out of the way here. See that? And now, ta-da! That's the hot glue. Kind of set, as it were. Now, normally if you're using a hot glue, that would still be all gummy and horrible and, you know, it would wiggle about. That is a no, solid plastic. I think that should be okay. Can you get that in shot? Can you get it? Yeah, it's really, really inclined now. Seriously, get into shot. Ah! Uh, seriously. I need to figure out where this pan is pointing. Because it used to be over the other side and I just don't know what I'm looking at anymore. So 
So yeah, that's nice and recessed. Um, maybe not get a little flat on angle. Seriously. Forget it. You get the idea. You get the idea. That's, that's the important bit. And then we just need to do the same on the other side. Right, my original idea was to attach these bits to the abs with, um, oh, you know, the magnets, or the you know, little rare earth magnets that you get. But, I'm now thinking that that strong bastard, um, um, thank me. Probably not strong enough to hold it um, if I'm kind of, you know, bending at all, you know, moving in any kind of great capacity. Let's see if we can get these angles roughly matched. Like that. Is this on screen? No. It's not even in that correctly. Ah. Um. Ah. Uh, that's the other thing that really gets me about hot glue. Stringy back. Uh, that wasn't quite as well glued as I think. Yeah. Like that. There we go. So, that's the hot glue set. Now, normally you need to be holding that for minutes and minutes and minutes to get it to actually. Hey! I don't know how well that's showing up in this light, but that's roughly where they'll sit. Possibly a bit lower. I'm not really sure. I haven't quite worked that out yet. Now, we do have more hot time to do. And you. And you. So, this is the real piece. Now, this is going to be the first part. I have a curve under this already. I probably end up doing too much and then having to heat the glue up again to release it a bit. But I prefer doing that than having it at too shallow an angle and I need to heat it up and kind of try and get it into more of a curve, if you know what I mean. But we'll see how we go. It's going to make things a bit of a mess laying. It's going to be quite hard to hold it in the case. There we go. Spend the length of it. Just the night to drop it under my finger, that's no fun. So, maybe a wee bit more than I wanted, but yeah. I think that's alright actually. Yeah, that's better. Yeah, because I was hoping that if I just gave it a quick squish, I'd be able to bring it back out a wee bit. But I like that in my space. Maybe more difficult than this, so Because my fingers don't work that way. Yank. I mean, it's... I'm just listening out the open window here. It is so wet and horrible here. It's like 10 past 3 in the afternoon. And it's just horrible and raining and getting dark. And you know it's winter. Hmm. That's a great one I need. Is that about the that's roughly the same, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is there. Yes. Stringy bats are up, but not. Yeah, the two worst things about hot glue. Stringy bits and burns. But that's the thing, because you're not having to hold it as long, I find that I don't get as many hot glue burns anymore as I used to. Like that. Which is nice, but that is still with the hot glue. Now we'll turn that up. We're good. So I'm going to turn this. 
keep them off. I'll hurt blue gun for her. And we can get back to the back. So we before I do that one. Well we're here, might as well reinforce the seams. Well it's on, I wouldn't have to do it again anyway. Just a wee squiggle across the, the different bits. This doesn't even need to be like a solid line, because um, I'm really just wanting a bit of going most of the way around. So make sure that the bits stay in place and don't break apart. This one I'm maybe going to go a little bit more because it's only a couple of millimeters out. More of a, a cr an across the seam effort because there's not as much of a, a depth between the two pieces. so that I don't get dripped on. There we go. So. That just means it's a bit less likely for the seams to pull apart because they now have a kind of plastic reinforcement trophy. Which kind of helps. Now, one thing I'm not fully set on yet, actually, are these pieces. I can't remember which way I ended up. No, I don't think it's that way. Go back to the front. Yes, right, so. Yeah, these side pieces, because I believe they need to be floating to allow for leg movement. So again, probably going to be with clips and elastic, but I'm not sure how I want to attach it to the head or the upper part. Now, where are we? Let me just have a quick check. to get my bolt working, but, hmm, when you're setting it up. Whatever. Anyway, my timer message hasn't come up, but I'm a bit confused because I thought it was meant to come up every half hour and we're at 42 minutes. Anyway, let's go over these things quickly. Again, I'll just run round this one a bit. It shouldn't really be necessary, especially the back piece that has like a full 5mm overlap with contact cement. Um, should mean that it holds regardless, but 
Yeah, sometimes I just like reinforcing my seams just to be on the safe side with a little bit of hot glue. And then making it go cold all cook. Just so that I'm not hanging about for ages. Thanks again to my props for that tip. Because otherwise it'd be here all day going hot glue. But I don't know. I'll do another wee cross cross hatchy one cross this recessed piece because there's only two more on it oops that's like I say this is just to get a bit of hot glue going across the join there to reinforce it no Try this again. <laughs> Cold propellant everywhere. So, who is anyone watching today? <laughs> Whatever you're doing, you're having fun. And potentially learning stuff like this really handy how to cool down hot glue trick. I mean, seriously, I just put that on. It's so whatever. Now, let's get that out of the way. Trying to think. I don't cut me out. So, we need to join this bit to here, this bit to here, and that bit to there. Where will we start? Where will we start? I'm stuck. Where's my finger? I think we just go for the base one first of all. I'm just going to put a new line across in here. Again, it doesn't matter if I go too far because it's on the outside. It's not going to be seen. Cross my spider. There we go. Now, Generally, I tend to try and go in the way so that it doesn't drop over onto the outside like that's just done. But I don't know that too many people are going to be paying that much attention to my crotch when I'm wearing this. If I ever get it finished, that is. Which is. <laughs> or it has been. A rather long project, given that I started it and kept on picking up other projects in between. Started it back in January 2016, but I wanted to check a load of other. Um, actually, before I do that, yeah, I wanted to try out a lot of other techniques and things, but. Um, things like different coatings and um, kind of actually figuring out how to do different compound curves and heat forming and um, the best way to do angles and things to get your hills and valley folds etc. And get them working the way I wanted before I dove in properly. But at the moment I've built most of it now. Um, I've got basically this card to finish and then I need to cut out but haven't glued the finger pieces yet. Um, and I still need to cut out transfer the templates, transfer the film and cut out and glue the abs. Helmet. Holy crap. I'm much closer than I thought. Ah, shit balls. No, let's turn it off for a minute. Um, so yeah, so once I finish this club piece I need to glue up the finger pieces and probably cut them down a bit because whenever I did them before 
Um, they were a little bit long, but it took me a while to actually figure out how long or short each of the bits need to be. Now this was a very hastily thrown together um, and then hand back in at some point. 2015? No, 2016. What year is this? When did I start this? It must have been 2016. Or did I do this in 2015? And I was still kind of debating what to do. Anyway, this was hastily thrown together in like a couple of days just to to do like a, a kind of Tony Stark outfit, it was basically Tony with an arc reactor that I've made, which was, oh there we go, um, and the hand, so I, don't, I just wanted to give like a general effect of, hey it's Tony Stark, um, so yeah, that's crap, um, and I'm really glad I did that because I, then redone the hands in 5 mil foam, they're much sturdier, but I also kind of increased the scale a little, um, so that I had a bit more room inside, because what I noticed whenever I was building that one, I did it out of 2 mil foam, which is far too floppy, and the in between the finger pieces just ripped. Um, but also, whenever, by the time I glued in the elastic to hold the finger pieces together and onto the hand, and um, it didn't really leave a lot of room for my hand plus a glove, you know, and it was just a wee thin spandex thing, you know, it wasn't even anything bulky. So I needed to give myself a little bit of extra room to fix stuff, because ideally what I want to do is steal somebody's idea that I saw a while ago, which was, oh, come on, um, have the circuit for the repulsor in the hand, with the wires coming up with, well, with one of the wires coming up one of the fingers, and have that finger, or have that wire split over a finger, over a knuckle joint, so that when your hand's relaxed, the light is off. And when you straighten your fingers out, the light comes on, so you get the boom, repulsor blast type effect of the, the light coming on whenever you move. I know that some people do it with a, a contact plate in the, the rear of it, in the hand plate, um, but I saw that guy's idea of the and uh, having it broken over a knuckle joint, and I, I don't know, I just like the idea of it, whether or not it'll work for anybody's guess, but let's see how we go here. <laughs> let's try that needles. Oh, that By the way, if anybody's wondering, I have no idea what we're listening to, I just went on one of those daily mixes on Spotify. And it's uh, this plano. Now, funnily enough, this apparently is meant to go pretty much 90 degrees here. Oops. Because the front panel kind of comes down the street and then disappears underneath, so... Yeah, we'll see. I'll be taking out most of that kind of, you know, between the legs you've got anyway once I've got it all glued and put in place and uh, heat formed properly so, so that it sits right. So, let's get some more glue on these. Oh shit, I was trying to say, hey, but a soil work. Now I know what we're listening to. Light the torch, maybe? No, it's not light the torch. Oh, 
understand the better we went with the This is just to give the glue a little bit of a tendency to grip to. It's not usually my system, but again, just because this is going to be around the waist, so there's going to be really incredible movement of my legs, or the forwards and backwards movement of my legs, and um, also lateral movement of my torso. or so. That should hopefully give me enough time to finish this off. And then I can look at some more screenshots, not screenshots, movie stills, to see how the hip uh, panels are meant to sit to allow for any kind of movement. And also shooting properly attached to the piece. Like I say, my thought, my idea at the moment is to have them probably glued, possibly at a recess level, rather along the base of this, but then have them joined with elastic to the back. Elastic which will need to be strong to webbing because it doesn't like glue itself, it just comes off. Um, and probably elastic and clips at the front because I'm wanting to make this whole front section removable. For the purpose, ah, for the purpose of restroom breaks. Oh my word, I am just destroying the place here. Oh my word, seriously. I actually want the hell. So I've got a, a 3D printed moon rolling at me from one side. Oops. No 3D moon. No that light like lamp thing rolling at me from one side. And my phone falling off its phone stand from the other, which is really hard to Hey. Let's see, this should be another yeah, looking tacky, but not too far gone just now. So, I'm just let's That's true, Spotify, but you know, the being able to skip things would be nice, but I'm not willing to play 10 or a month just to be able to skip. Here's what I'm saying. 
Maybe if I ever get some requests sorted out, I may want that to see it. Yes, it is. I haven't actually got any of their albums after I'm going to get a buffer. Buffer? I've been meaning to check them out again for ages. What I am not going to put you through is me putting these on. Because the joggies I'm wearing at the moment I think would be too big, so I would need to be wearing more form fitting um, than what I'm wearing at the moment, and I don't think anyone wants to see me in my boxes, so there's that. Now, that's the front, that's the butt. I think it got pretty decent angles seated into those. That's just trench, a V trench, 45 degree angles, cut in, filled with hot glue, and then cooled down again. I've reinforced all my seams to keep that together, but my idea is for this, if we can get this one here, there. From the back, I'm probably going to take this off about here, and then probably round about, oops, uh, around about maybe a curve around about here so that it looks like it goes all the way through but doesn't. Um, because funnily enough, having even that thin strip of foam going between your legs, it's quite uncomfortable for walking. <laughs> As I know from doing the prototype version about a year or so ago. No, it was more than that. It was about a year and a half ago. So yeah, I think that's an alright looking design. Recesses. Big booty. Yes. Cool. So. Uh, a few minutes. What I'm going to do very quickly. Let's double check what's going on here. I'm also. Going to. Going to. What is this? Nope. What is going on? Yeah. Um, I'm going to bring up Google every sec. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a window to put the browser in to show my screen. Yeah, I'll figure that out at another point. I just very quickly want to check what these hips are meant to look like. Because I don't want my hips to lie. I'm featured hipster. What? I'm so into the images. No. First screenshot. No, that's cartoon. No, that's a toy, so that's not going to work. Come on, let's put in a movie shot with him doing his superhero landing down on one knee or something. Come on. Ah, right. And picture it. Maybe still. In another way, I just want to see the guy walking, but all you ever get are upper torso shots. Excuse it, right? There's one. Nope. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, just, that's not even a move. <laughs> that's somebody who's put their toy outside and made it look like it's moving. Wow. Come on. Why is this so difficult? Oh. 
That's a good question, huh? This needs to be a last of his all grind actually. So like a lateral movement so that I can put my leg out. Hmm. Because of that, but so right, okay. Yeah. I think. If I wasn't doing it with shield, if I was doing it with shield, it would still have flex. But because it's gonna be pretty rigid, I think it would be a little silly of me to not allow myself to spread my legs at all. Yeah. Okay. Three will get heat from slightly, and I think probably tacked into place or taped into place when for when coating, so that they hold the right curvature, and then attached top, front, and rear with elastic, so that I've got movement in all directions. It's just that way I don't want to make it and then be like, hey, I can't move. Because that would be pretty dumb. What I might need to do, let's see if I can make this up. Is actually, when I do go to coat it, probably coat this piece. Keep it all on using something. I'm attacking on using fault glue. To have the piece covered in like cling film or saran wrap for the yeah, any American. So this is gonna need to cut out like that and probably like that as well. Because I want it to be able to hold the same curves as the actual plug piece so that it looks like it's part of it rather than just a separate bit that's you know, stuck on. We'll see. I'll keep the, the elastic relatively short so that there's not too much gapping and um, whatever it's kind of fixed in place. But we'll see. We shall see. But for the moment, that then done. What I also need to do is figure out how the knee pieces go together for movement. Also, Oh, shoe pieces. Yeah, this is before I don't give with uh, contacts and anyway, or cutting. <laughs> um, because I think this piece is maybe done in the end. I need to see how much foot moves in it. Um, but I think this piece is going to need to be attached to the shoe on this heel piece probably attached to the actual shin and pinup piece behind it, so that foot will move within that. But I'll need to see how that would be for walking. So if that's how it's still right in it. Hmm. Hmm. What I might do is have these bits put it in shield so that they're sturdy. To have these bits coated in seal so that they're flexible and don't actually crush my ankles. Because that would be the worst. But yeah, we need to see how they go together properly. But yeah, I don't know. So I think Five minutes ago, four minutes ago. Um, and oh, I'm it's the hot glue gun. Um, <laughs> that's the one thing about this hot glue that I've got at the moment. Um, was uh, 
a friend from work had given it because um, I think her dad's work were getting rid of their excess stock of it because they'd moved on to something else. And um, they've seen new packages for when they were shipping stuff out. And um, it's <laughs> the whole thing about the horses being turned into glue in the knacker's yard and whatever else. Um, and the hot glue, when it's heated up, smells of, like dead horse. It's <laughs> Um, so even though it's not like toxic or anything, I tend to keep the respirator on when I'm using it, just because it stinks so much. Unfortunately, that is the foam pants, about as far as I can get them just now. So what I still need to do, as I mentioned, is to use a little heat mounted thing to heat the trenches in these because the last time I did it I used a scalpel and I cut all the, the little lines which you may be able to see yeah all those little lines are meant to be 45 degree angles on each side to create a trench to make a finger piece come around like that and quite frankly new um, so, I've got a wee heat mounted thing which leaves almost the perfect size of trench. So I'm going to do all in, out the back, so that I'm not stinking up in here with toxic foam cream. Um, and then, glue these inner pieces together. As in the, the kind of under finger pieces. And this to this. And this to this, and then this onto that, into the front, um, and then kind of reach in with the hot glue and do the lines so I can hold them to the right angles to get straight lines to make it look like metal. Um, so the hopping is on, I may, I may do that on stream. It's probably going to be pretty dull. <laughs> 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 28 finger pieces. So if that's what anybody wants to watch, I'll certainly do it on stream. I doubt it, so the likelihood is that I won't. And I also at some point need to cut out and transfer into form the arms. But again, that stuff I can do in front of the TV. And I'd much rather be through here doing the gluing and getting it actually to look like something. Um, let me see if I can reach that. Let's, 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 oh crap, I don't know that. One of the other things I need to do is so the thighs, which are here, and fit. Fit my legs lengthways in this, um, that's the word I'm looking for, proportion. But I have weird legs, so my, although they fit lengthways because I have short thighs, they don't really fit that length, widthways, especially if I'm trying to sit down in them. So what I've done here is split this part. And what I'm going to do is draw out, template out that gap, probably with about two inches on the top, just to give a bit of extra room. Um, these are going to be strapped onto the, the cord piece and under the, 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 the halves anyway. Um, because I, I want a bit of room for movement for airflow because that's going to get hella sweaty if I don't. And also, because Ideally, where is it? I want to make a little holder so that my phone. Oh, what have I done? So that my phone can sit down inside it. And so I can have my phone on there because what I, I'm also think I'm so overthinking this before I've even finished the fucking bell is. All the electronic type stuff that I want to put in it. Basically, 
And my brother's in law. Did I put that in there? No, I'll put it in my other phone. And got me a an LED. What do you call it? Panel. Um, for a Raspberry Pi. So I want to use that in the arc reactor, ideally to get it to pulse. Which I think would be cool as all hell. Um, but I need to figure that out because I know nothing about them. So uh, hopefully somebody on the RPF has already done something similar and I can just uh, acquire their uh, hard work <laughs> and uh, amend it to my needs. Um, I also want to put fans in the torso and in the helmet. Um, and ideally have the faceplate open. Now, like I say, although I'm building it out of foam, I am going to be coating the bulk of it with a hardening substance called Polycrops Shield, um, which can make it foam as hard as a, a hard hat used in the construction industry. So, we'll see how that goes. I'll be using that first in the Spider-Man face shell as a test. Hopefully soon. I had hoped to do it over the holiday period, but um, it's visiting people and body training a toddler. Doesn't really happen that way. So I am going to call that done for the moment. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you learnt something if you didn't enjoy it. Uh, even if it was just a little tip from Punish Drops about cooling down the hot glue because to me that is one of the most amazing tips ever. And I will share it with anybody that I come across that ever uses hot glue. <laughs> Um, so yeah, thank you for watching, if you're making stuff, keep making stuff, if you're not making anything, give it a shot, you never know how easy it can be until you try. Um, it may not look like a TwitchCon winning entry, uh, the first thing that you make, but trust me, you get better with every build you make. You really, really do, and if you put the time and the effort into you know, watching people, if you do watch people on Twitch, give them a follow, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything, um, and it makes them happy. All good. Um, so yeah, if you aren't making anything, give it a shot. It is worth it, trust me, to say, I made that, and you know, it may not be amazing, but it's cool enough for me. I like it. So, on that note, thank you very much for watching. If you are ever bored, you can come and join me on Talon Sword Cosplay on Facebook, Talon Sword on Instagram, Talon Sword Cosplay on YouTube, which is essentially just an export of these streams. So if you've watched the stream, don't bother with the YouTube channel and you really want to punish yourself for some reason. Or join me on Twitter at Talon Sword Cosplay, uh, which is cosplay without the vowels in it. I am intending on changing my name at some point, probably to Talon Sword Workshop or Talon Sword Foundry or so, you know, something that isn't just cosplay because I haven't actually been to a con in like two years, so I think cosplay is a bit of a misnomer in terms of me at the moment. Um, although I'm making costumes and things, most of the stuff I'm doing is really for Halloween or, you know, a long term thing. So, I may change it. And if I do, I'll update this screen. Awesome. Anyway, come say hi. <laughs> Enjoy. Bye-bye.